I'm so excited. Right, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Charlie and I suffer from chronic illness now, 100% success rate in winning PIP for myself and others. Recently, my YouTube channel, it's been clear what people want, what you want, and that's more information on PIP. Today, I'm like, I'm so excited about it. We're going through a tribunal submission appeal. And what is stunning, I'm so excited about this, what is stunning about this is I did not do this. What I'm about to show you, I did not do. So a gentleman has watched the tribunal submission vlog, I'll put a link. He and his carer then created the appeal pack. Um, and the reason that they contacted me is because it was too big to upload. And the deadline was literally that day. So it was, it was by chance we ended up linking that I happened to be on the emails. So we ended up linking and I couldn't believe it. I could not believe how amazing it was. He's given permission, I've taken out all of his personal details, obviously, but he's given permission for me to share it with you because if it wasn't for the uh, guide, he wouldn't have been able to do the pack that he did, which again is stunning. So there is information on his conditions. And again, like when you when we go through it, it's, it's, it's I think stunning is gonna be the key word of the day. It's amazing. There we go, try and mix up my my words a bit. Hang on, pants pants checks. Oh. Oh. Okay. I know the background is bad because I I've in the middle of lost my home and I haven't mine isn't I can't move into mine yet. But I I know the background's crap, but I can't have my pants drying in the background I just can't do it I'll talk to you about incontinence toilets everything you like but we cannot sit and have to you can't sit and have to look at my pants drying that's crossing the line <laughs> right I need to shut up and let's shut up and get on with it again they've used the template brilliant use the beginning bit of the template brilliant and the timeline included medication which if you've seen the tribunal submission you see that I actually missed that off of Wendy's um, I'm not breaching confidentiality on Wendy's. Wendy's, we've got loads of vlogs together, including her tribunal prep and outcome, which I'll put a link. Reasons for appealing. Now, look at this. Pages 22 to 108. When I looked at this, because we were on such a deadline, I, I just quickly whizzed through and went, oh, this is stunning. And then I went, you've got too much evidence. So that's gonna be the key thing for today. I'm gonna to take you through the template again. I'm gonna take you through the scoring system, but I'm going to do exactly what I did for this gentleman and talk to you about evidence. Everyone's obsessed with evidence. You do not need a hundred pages of evidence. You don't, okay? He's put in the PIP timeline, which at tribunal you have to have that because they've got to set the scene, you know, like Judge Judy does. Okay, so the questionnaire things. All these little things is me, I've tried to take out specifics, like just cause, you know, if we've got any stalkers out there, it's none of their business. So again, look, look at all of this. Look at everything he's had to go through. Like pip, pip, further evidence, assessment report. Disallow, what? Like, and when you, when we go through this together and you see what this gentleman goes through, it is one of those times where the system, it doesn't support us. But I think I think with the learnings he's had with this, when he, when he goes through his review, it's gonna be a lot easier. So my dog's found some of her Christmas presents. This is, oh, that was his name, so, uh, timeline, mental health. Now, this bit is really important for me because on this channel, in our community, we are not going to discriminate against anyone. Um, and an area where there are a lot of programs, not enough, but there are more programs to get people that have been to prison back into work. There's still so much discrimination. Um, everyone that I employed through that program, it was great. It was brilliant. People with disabilities that have also been to prison, it's like a double whammy of discrimination, isn't it? Trying to get a job. Like with the, with, oh, it's so difficult. So I'm really, ha obviously, you know, I'm not encouraging people to go to prison, but um, we're not discriminating. So, I, and this, the events, obviously I wouldn't wish this on anyone 
but the fact that he and his carer have documented that, this is really important. You know, this is a substantial event. Construction industry, you know, it, the, the detail he has in here is absolutely stunning. Then we've got another horrendous event in his life. Having someone pass away in your arms, I think we can all agree that that's gonna, if, you know, unless you're one of the rare sociopaths, that's going to impact you. More diagnosis. So then his conditions. Right, so that, just brilliant conditions. And don't worry if you're doing this and you don't have this level of events. You know, my events, I have severe psoriatic arthritis. I don't struggle with my mental health. Don't get me wrong, I do a lot, a lot. I put a lot of effort into CBT to prevent myself as much as possible from struggling with my mental health. But don't worry if in your case you don't have this level of events. It's not a problem. We're all unique, yeah? Great that he's self-aware enough to put all of these in. Um, so this one is, is really simple. The doctors will have... So these conditions, the PIP, DWP, will contact your doctor um, to check this. So, and that's their job. You know, their job is to cross check. For me, on the, if you look at the other PIP tribunal submission guide, that's about Wendy's, there's, if you ask your GP for your GP records, don't ask them to bother doing your letter because it's a waste of time and it costs you money and they're never good enough. Just get that and then the evidence, those GP notes, let me just open Wednesdays. This is what Wendy got from the doctor. So she asked for a copy of her medical records and it shows active problems and significant past. That is brilliant evidence, which would confirm all of your conditions. But instead of obviously you saying it to Pip, it's a professional independent doctor. This bit for me is my favorite, might be the wrong word, but it, you know, that's the word I'm gonna use. This is my favorite bit because for example, depression. One person can say they've got depression, but they're the equivalent of able-bodied. They go about their life, they go to work, they have a reasonably healthy diet. Off, off. Um, go and play, go and play. And they say they have depression. However, when, s can you tell she's got energy? She can't go out for a normal walk because of being spayed. Um, then someone else can have, when they say they have depression, for them it's a gut-wrenching weight on them where they struggle to even get up off the sofa. Um, so for me, this bit is where I truly learn about the individual. And that's what we've got to get across to Pip because we're all individuals. You know, witnessing a murder, I never even, you know, I, I've witnessed a murder, um, I, but I don't suffer from PTSD. Um, and reading this, I think the reason I don't is due to where I worked at the time and the support network I had around me. Um, again, we're all individuals, we all react differently to depression, to pain, to defeat, fatigue, to um, traumatic, traumatic incidents we've experienced. Um, so again, I know I've harped on a bit, but this is really important. Nightmares, understandably. Um, and I think you can see from this individual, this is, he's experienced trauma from childhood throughout his life. Flashbacks. I can't imagine what that's like. Ex having flashbacks four to five times a week. Fuck. Anxiety, I'm not surprised with all of this. Panic attacks three to four times a week. Can you imagine how exhausted this guy is? When you go through PIP, they tend to, and you say you suffer from anxiety, they ask you how it feels. This comment is brilliant the carer that filled this in with this individual like high five because 
I think the description, you can just imagine in your head what this gentleman's going through. That, I need to learn from that. Again, the comments here are so descriptive because we've read the above bit about what's caused the PTSD. And when it comes to childhood trauma, we don't need to even know the details of that to understand throughout this gentleman's entire life there's been multiple incidents um, that's resulted in, in this that makes him feel like he's not good enough. And this, this thought, which leads into the, this, and, and that's what's stunning about the way they've laid this out, is it, it builds up. You can see, for the tribunal's point of view, I think they're gonna get great feedback on this because even though I've never met this individual, we've never spoken, we've only emailed, I, uh, I, I can see his story. I can understand the challenges he has. And most people, their anxiety does lead towards agitation, irrational aggression. Um, again, he's so self-aware, it stunned him. This is what you need to do for Pip. As awful as it is, you have to be self-aware. And it can take time. You know, I'm working with people at the moment, you know, emailing back and forth going, are you sure? Have a think about it. Self-care, yeah, his level of depression, yeah. The, if he's feeling like, you know, why, why bother? Um, there's gonna be that challenge on getting up and getting dressed. Fatigue. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Again, being open and honest about this, and I think we need to thank this gentleman. Um, like Wendy, the first person that shared her everything, everything on YouTube. This gentleman having been brave enough to share this detail so that you, anyone that's watching this, that is going through this, can understand you are not alone. You are not alone. I'm really, really pleased that his attempts were unsuccessful. Um, you know, because going through this, I can see that he's stubborn and doesn't want to be the way he is. He doesn't want to struggle with his mental health. He doesn't want to be restricted in that manner. Um, you can see through the PIP stuff, he's a fighter. Blurred vision. See, this, this, the way this was described as well, if someone said to me, I, like, I've helped someone with blurred vision and I wasn't that specific. I didn't ask them, is it more one eye than the other eye? I didn't even think about that. I just thought blurred vision, oh, it's, you know, it's a bit blurred. So this has really helped educate me going through this. Um, four to five times a week, headaches and migraines. Have you ever had a migraine? Like, ooh. And yeah, is the results of the strained eyes. So it's not even like, he could prevent it because of his vision. Meltdowns, I'd be having meltdowns as well. Verbal and physical aggression. Oh, shit, no. You know, you just want to help. But I think the help we can do in our community is, you know, help people with PIP and then, you know, CBT and what works for us to share that knowledge in a positive manner. Hyperactivity. Again, brilliant um, explanation there. Really painting a picture. And that must be a nightmare, like even after it's administrating meds, still suffering from insomnia. So go on to uh, medication. Hang on a minute, the medication causes side effects, causes headaches and nausea. Do you know what I think might happen? When we were, I've only done one tribunal at this point. When we went to tribunal, the doctor was stunning. Right, so obviously I'm not a doctor. Well, not obviously, if you know me, I'm not a doctor. The doctor at Wendy's tribunal looked at the meds and because everything was broken down so clearly, he was able to go, you need to go to a pain clinic or, you know, and he gave advice on that, which was greatly appreciated. So I'm, I'm hoping if he goes to tribunal, and to be honest, 
based on the amount of evidence he has and all the detail that we're going to go through, I think they're going to make him an offer. Um, but I do think it would be interesting for him to see what the doctor says. Because if you suffer from migraines and headaches like four times a week, do you really want tablets that are giving you headaches? No, that's not going to help you feel good. Now this bit I didn't put in. So when I read this bit, it worried me because I, I do think there's no good getting caught up in the how crap the pit process is. But when I read this, I'm like, you know, obviously very angry and it's your right to do what you want with your pip. This is the points, okay? Um, if you, I don't know how to yet put these um, attachments in the description. Um, so it's a bit late in the day, I'm definitely declining, but I really wanna get this done. Um, so if you want these attachments until I can figure it out, just drop me an email, details are in the description. Um, so these are the scoring, and look at this, nice, blunt, to the point, I do not prepare meals, she's a trainee assistance dog, I'm going to stop because she has not stopped bothering me since I've started, we've been recording for 36 minutes at this point, there is no way that is what, how many minutes you're up to because I would have edited, and I do feel a bit crappy, so... I think she's just doing her job. I keep thinking, because she's had surgery, does she need the toilet or something? She's, you know, can't get her energy right and burnt, but I'm going to stop. We're back. Um, Ollie was right, I had to stop. Um, yeah. Do any of you get it where your nose is just like a constant drip? It's just a slow leak, like all the time. It's not sexy. Another one of the reasons why I'm in the extremely single category. <laughs> right, let's get back to it. As I said... Stunning, absolutely stunning, blunt. They can't debate that. And they, we know that they're not gonna give the right point, so you have to be blunt. Um, now, if there's like one day a month that you manage to cook a meal, but you're absolutely exhausted afterwards and you're extra sick, that like that doesn't count. If you're doing it because you feel like you're a burden and you're pushing yourself because you feel guilty or the person that prepares your meals is tired or they're off, if you have a carer, that doesn't count because the aftermath is so severe, right? Um, I'm not safe. Perfect. Why aren't you safe? What's happened? I've burnt food many t and himself many times. I totally understand that. Now, this is a really good explanation because I usually say brain fog, but brain fog is a lack of concentration. I love that word in. Um, and drowsy feelings because of his meds. If you're watching this, gentlemen, you need to go back to your doctor. This is not good enough. This is not good enough. Your meds are not good enough. I'm also unsafe to... Uh, oh, previously cut myself. Yeah, now this is brilliant. Brilliant, because you know they told the story earlier. This is where you layer it in to daily living to explain it. I didn't even think about his blurry vision. Even though I read it earlier, it didn't enter my head for preparing food. So yeah, you can imagine if your vision's blurry and you're tr trying to chop some, no, no. History of self-harm, that's gutting, isn't it? This bit here is good, but Pip, Pip would be like, just eat the same food, yeah? So, but I do think that's really good detail. And same as what a lot of us are, I've spoken to a few people recently and they're like, the vlog I did about, um, I can't remember which, which one it was, Sorry, guys, she knows. Can't remember which one it was, but about you survive off takeaways or pre made sandwiches, like, because you haven't got a choice. It's expensive. And I've never been so sick of takeaways. I never, if you'd have told me when I was a teenager, one day you'll be sick of takeaways, I would not have believed you. I would have thought I could live off them for the rest of my life. Um, sorry about these little hashes. I did a edit, replace, and I've screwed it up. I was trying to take out some of the data. Just ignore those. Not safe carrying food due to poor vision blurry understood this is brilliant so let's check his points he cannot it is really simple he's an eight he, you know he's this he can't do it that's it that's it really simple and don't forget you need 12 um for enhanced right eating and drinking cannot chop food which we already know about because we've just done 
preparing. Get it. My carer cuts up certain types of food, i.e. meat. Now, Pip love it. When they talk about meat, they'll always suggest chicken. I'm in the category where chicken is tough to cut up. Um, obviously, if it's been prepared in a slow cooker, it's not. And that's suitable for the arthritis in my jaw joints. But if it's like chicken that's been cooked in the oven, sometimes maybe it's my mum's cooking, uh, which I'm very grateful of. Um, sometimes it's, I don't want to, it's, it's, I don't want to cut it. So we don't really eat chicken. Um, we tend to eat meals. We've adjusted to eat meals that work for my jaw joints. Like Iceland, this is not sponsored, Iceland do an amazing paella um, and pasta and meatballs and they're like two for a fiver, two bags for a fiver. You don't need any chopping, no nothing, eat it with a spoon or a fork, it's great. Because I avoid food that needs chopping because I don't want to have to ask my mum to chop it, she's in the next room. I don't want to have to ask her to chop it. So I'll request food that doesn't need chopping. Oh yeah, sorry, I, sorry, I lost my train of thought then. So Pip, if you say that you don't chop your food, either someone does it for you or they would have to, but actually because you don't want to ask them, you avoid it. Um, they'll go, but what about chicken? Um, so for me, it's like, well, no, because it needs chopping. But at some point when I was getting chicken, I, scissors are great for chopping. If, if your hands are hurting, scissors are easier than a knife and fork. Less chance of slipping and everything, but obviously it still doesn't help when your hands are hurting. Um, but that's what I used to use for chopping before I got to the point where I was like, this is ridiculous, just eat different food. Got the prompting in. Uh, most of you are forgetting about the prompting, right? If you are in pain 24 seven, varying levels of pain, and if you suffer from fatigue, every time I say to people, and I, I don't word it as prompting, my question to people is, does your daughter, partner, brother, whoever is in your life, even your friend ringing you up, do they nag you to eat? Every single person that is in pain, 24, varying levels of pain 24 seven, suffers from chronic fatigue goes, oh yeah, cause I just won't eat, I'm too tired. So you get prompted. Yeah, every day. That's points. So need you to think about that, please. And and obviously this is all about being honest, yeah? So you've got, you've got to be honest with yourself first, then Pip. So if you didn't have the prompting, what would you eat? Would you just grab a packet of biscuits, sweets, and not bother with the meal? Because you haven't got the energy. Please don't say you can't be bothered or you're lazy. I do not like that terminology because it is not accurate. Don't say that. If anyone says that to me when I'm talking to them or emailing or in your chat, I will tell you off. Even though on YouTube you're not supposed to be bossy with people, I will tell you off because chronic illness, if you have chronic illness, it does not mean you're lazy or can't be bothered. You are ill. You're, you're battling your illness 24 seven. It's not that you're lazy. It's that you literally, you've already used all your energy. So please don't call yourself lazy or say you can't be bothered, okay? It's not good for your mental health. When you describe yourself like that, you're battering your soul. It's not acceptable. Lack of motivation. Um, I love that wording. Lack of motivation due to side effects of medication, depression and possible autism. I love how they've got in about the possible autism. But although I'm saying I love it, Pip will just ignore it, okay? So if I was doing this with someone, I wouldn't have even put that in. But again, th what they've done here is stunning. Often suffer from lack of appetite due to low moods. Yeah. Uh, and like for those of us in pain, when your pain levels are a certain level, we're not eating. Uh, I've been known not to eat for days on end. The longest period being two week, almost two weeks. Now, with things like this, we know that the human can go without food right obviously not without water after three days you, you're in real trouble this is really severe like as we as you're going through this with me i think you can agree this poor gentleman it's this is severe when i say poor gentleman i i do feel some sympathy but what we need to do we have no choice we have no choice we, we can't 
wish away our chronic illness, right? We have to wait for modern science to catch up with us. And I'm all for positive thinking, you know that. But we've got to adapt to our situations. We've got to do everything in our power to make the best of it and improve our quality of life. So although I'm saying this poor gentleman because his life is tough, um, I'm not oozing sympathy because it's like, right, this is your situation, it sucks, move forward with it. Mainly use a spoon, occasionally a fork, no knives, yep, scoopable. Right, let's check his points. Assistance for food to be cut up, two points. So this whole paragraph is two points. Oh, hang on a minute, no, no, we've got prompting in there. And this is linked to the prompting and prompting, right. So let's go back. Needs prompting, four points. And this is for tribunal, yeah? They have to give him those points. Like they've got to give him those points. When you look at the detail in here, they need to give the four points. So six points. So already in the first two sections, he's got enhanced PIP. That's it, done. What I've discovered in PIP claims, assessments, mandatory reconsiderations, and tribunal is PIP won't, they hate giving you the full points. They hate it. So what they tend to do is they'll spread the points. I think that when he wins his tribunal, mum, I'm recording. Can you talk to the cats more quietly? Um, yeah, when he wins his tribunal, um, they did make him an offer. He declined it because he knows he's, he's done his homework, he knows his points, he should be getting full pip. I think they're going to look at this pack and they're going to offer him full pip. That's it. But I think when he gets the points, he'll find that they're spread. They don't actually match what he knows he should get. They'll spread it to give him 12 to 13 points, not the full amount. I've never ever seen someone get exactly what they should. They just, they spread it. And if that's their strategy, fine. So long as people are getting in what they're entitled to, I don't care. So we're going to keep going because obviously this is really helpful for you to see. Right, so managing your treatments, lovely, lovely, stunning, well done gentleman and carer. Now, the judge loved this in Wendy's pack. Definitely, if you haven't seen the other guide on tribunal submissions, Wendy's guide, go and watch that, because in there we put a picture of the aid for buttons and zips. Um, this is stunning. That, and they really, they literally said, thank you for putting in the image. This is stunning. So, managing treatments. Now, right, I want to go through this with you. I want to go to the points. Because on managing therapy, what people don't know is this is about how much time someone assists you a week. Okay? So, first of all, if you use an aid, and anyone that has meds, I don't care if it's one tablet a day, every, all of us should be using this because because of our conditions, we get distracted, we're exhausted, we get brain fog. You know, we need these pill pots because the meds are important and I am cannot tell you how many people I've spoken to, including codename Lara Croft, who I've spoken to recently, that when we talked about the meds, she wasn't sure she's actually taken them. And I had one lady that she came round with the biggest handbag. Hang on, I'm gonna put I'm gonna go full face for this one. She had the biggest handbag I've ever seen in my life. And when I said, what meds are you on? She started hauling out all of these, like all my desk with loads of boxes. And I was like, what? And I was like, how do you remember to take off? Like, I was literally looking at this stack of boxes. Like her bag was like, oh, wait a minute, like that big. It, I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating. May, all right, maybe that big. Yeah, maybe that was probably more realistic. Big. And all the meds were in the boxes. And I was like, how do you remember? Like, you suffer from brain fog. How do you remember? And she's like, oh, I tried. What? Get all, get all that crap out of your handbag and put it in a pill box. Put it in a pill box. Mine's very worn. I've got my gaffer tape and my happy cow, because it makes me smile every time I see it. It's very worn. Put it in your pill box. Again, I know I'm not supposed to be bossy on YouTube, but I, you know. When it comes to your safety, even in my, I've been unemployed since 
July the 30th was my last working day. It's now November the 8th. In my job, if it was someone's safety, I would be absolutely assertive and a bit of a dictator. Only when it comes to people's safety. Otherwise, I have the management style of, I would rather influence and people choose to follow procedure. But when it comes to your safety, no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go against the advice on YouTube and I'm gonna be bossy. Right, let's crack on. Oh, this is it's, oh, so good. Right, hang on a minute, where are we? My carrot administers my medica- Oh yeah, right, so don't forget, it's a, so he's got one point because of the pill pot, right? Uh, it's called a dosset, but it's just a word we don't use, so just say pill pot, right? For a lot of you, us, no you, I'm, I'm actually all right with my med. No, us, see, look, denial, denial. Um, so difficult, isn't it? Um, for us, we forget to take our meds. Oh, hang on, right, right. We just need to talk about my denial. That is really bad. I'm literally spending time mentoring people like you watching this. That does someone have to remind you to say meds? Yesterday, I did a meeting with um, code name Bros. You, do you remember the pop, the two brothers, the pop stars? That's his code name, uh, Bros. Um, and we started our meeting. It was a like a Zoom face to face. Like, how are you, you know, because we've obviously never met before. And um, when he said, are you all right? And if I've always been the type of person where if someone, doesn't matter if it's stranger, they go, you're all right. If I've got a urine infection, they're going to find out. And you can see the horror on people's faces when they're like, and I'm like, oh, sorry, we're well, just being polite. Don't ask me how I am if you're not actually interested. Anyway, he asked me how I was. So I sat there and I thought about it and I thought, oh, actually, I'm in a lot of pain. And, and I was like, I think I need to take some pain meds. I looked at the clock, I hadn't taken pain meds for five hours. And I was so grateful that he asked me how I was and that we had that conversation because I, I, I hadn't taken my pain meds. Then it was quite good because then we got to bond over the fact of, yeah, because you get distracted. Because I'd been helping someone with their CV and I'd been replying to you guys chatting on YouTube. I just got into it and completely forgot and then start, didn't realise that I was declining, which, as I'm talking about it now, I can feel I'm declining. So, yeah, I haven't taken... Yeah. My pain meds, um, I don't have to take them every four hours because if I feel all right, then, you know, I don't need to take them but due to weather changes and mobility and stuff like that. It, so it's not that simple on, you can't just set an alarm because I might not take them. And they're highly addictive. I am an addict. I don't want to be, but I am. What are you nose nudging me for? I'm taking, I oh, know, I didn't realize. Pain meds with sugar. Sugar's obviously worse for me than pain meds. It gives me a kick and we need me to have a bit of a kick to do this. I'm okay. I'm all right. Just editing this and I'm watching this bit about prompting. When I was employed, boss is joining the meeting. Um, when I was employed, my prompting was through my mum, but a lot of it was through the team that I worked with because as I decline, my speech is less. Um, I'm just not my usual chatty self. And my speech gets garbled, I, I can slur words, miss words, get confused. So the team would automatically go, are you all right? Have you had your, have you had your meds? Um, every single day. And I've just realized that I'm missing that since I've stopped work. And I definitely have declined. I keep saying it's about the, tri the tribunal where I got injured, but actually some of it's probably because I'm missing those prom the prompts and my mum's declined, so she's not, um, she hasn't got the energy to be doing the prompts for me, so I need to have a think about that. We're constantly a work in progress. This is why PIP is really difficult as well, because we're, everything changes, Our, we change from day to day, so it's very difficult. So even for myself, it's a constant learning process and adapting all the time, which is exhausting in itself, isn't it? Um, so I, I need to work on that. So the reason my carer has to do this is several suicide attempts. Fire overdose. Unable to read the dosage, okay. 
Right, so the carrot checks his meds AM and PM. Doesn't take long to do about five to ten minutes. She also orders and collects my prescriptions. She didn't... Oh, I'm saying she, but I don't know the gender of the carer. If my carer didn't do this, I wouldn't have my meds on a daily basis. Understood. Right, let's check the points. So he's got one point for the pill pot. Pip are going to look at this, right? Five to ten minutes. So they're going to take the five minutes twice a day. So ten minutes a day times seven days, 70 minutes. So that's one hour, ten minutes. The first bit where you get points is if it takes no more than three and a half hours. No more than three and a half hours. Okay, so you could get two points here. I, and the, like, obviously I can't work for Pip because I would give out the right points and I would be really supportive of people. This bit here, I would include time on that to add into it. Pip pro probably won't, but based on the severity of this gentleman's case, he absolutely should get three points here. Let's move on to washing and bathing. Look, nice and blunt. Yeah, I cannot simply manage to wash or bath unaided. Really blunt, no debate. My carer prompts me, okay? Due to possible autism, they'll ignore that. Low moods and depression. Brilliant wording. My carer assists me getting in and out of the bath or shower. Why? due to per poor blurry vision. I struggle to see how far close it is. Have you had any incidents? Yes, I've slipped on multiple occasions. That This paragraph, it it is, I uh, know stunning's like the word of the day, right? It's stunning. It literally matches exactly how Pip would ask the questions. Please tell me I'm recording this right. Yes. It tells the story. It's great. My carer is present at all times. Due to poor blurry vision. Due to my mental health, this leaves me extremely embarrassed that my carer has to assist me with this. Brilliant wording. Brilliant. None of us want people to assist us. None of us do. And this extremely embarrassed is the really polite way of saying it makes me feel like shit. Um, because it does, doesn't it? I think. But obviously, like, we can't word it like that in a PIP document. But that's how it makes what it makes me feel when I need assistance. I've been known to not wash or bathe for weeks due to low mood depression. Yeah, I think you can tell that I haven't read all this detail. So when I got this through, I happened by chance to log on later in the day because usually I'm in bed by about one. And, you know, unless I'm feeling really good or, you know, I'm trying to do something. Um, so I happened to log on and he was in a panic because he couldn't upload it because the file was too big. So when I opened it, I was so shocked, like, when I saw that how the format, and I was like, oh my god, it's my format, yeah, it's helped, it's helped. I was so happy, so I sort of flicked through it and saw the, yeah, points, 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 oh, this is brilliant, oh, there's a picture in it, right. Then I got to just help him make it smaller, right, so that he can upload it. I am reading some of this for the first time with you today, and I think you can tell from the types of guides that I'm doing is I want them to be real, real examples of real people that I would keep uploading because we all feel slightly different, don't we? Um, we all respond slightly differently to things. So even if you've got the same condition, it doesn't mean that your life matches that other person. So, you know, the more that I help, hopefully we'll get more people that are willing to share their information like this gentleman and Wendy when do started the ball rolling then you know we can see see how it goes right. oh sorry not see how it goes it can help you that's and especially for this gentleman he like obviously my priority was help him get his stuff uploaded and then later on i thought do you know what i'm going to ask him if i can use it because it's so good obviously i layered it in with you don't have to it's not a problem i'll help you even if you don't want to it's totally your choice and he was like of course you can you know, I trust you to take out my personal, my name and those details. And I was like, brilliant. Because he explained he wouldn't have been able to do such a stunning submission if I hadn't have shared Wendy's. So it's, you know, we're, we're supporting each other. But I am reading it for the first time. Now, gentlemen, if you're watching this and getting in a bath makes you feel anxious and at risk of panic attacks, don't have a bath. It's a very, having a bath and a shower every day is absolutely a Western culture. 
right? I've spent a lot of time in Africa and millions of people, probably the majority of the world is not bathing and showering every day because they don't have access to water in that manner. And they certainly wouldn't waste water like what we do on showering and bathing every day. I have a bath maybe once every six months because it's exhausting, it's dangerous, slip. Try You try and get dressed, like, well, obviously you're wrong. You know, trying to get your clothes on after you've had a bath, when they stick, like, it's, it's more exhausting and it's high risk of falls. So I wash, I literally wash at the sink, top and tail, top and tail. Um, that's, that's, we can maintain our personal hygiene the same as millions of other people just by doing that. Don't get me wrong, it is lovely having a bath. So nice having a soak and you know, it's it's great. But if it's creating anxiety for you, don't do it. Just have a wash. You can be part of team top and tail, you know. I might have to get, we might have to think of a better team name for it, yeah. I would have extremely poor hygiene. Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at the points. So we've got assistance getting in and out, prompting, news assistance to be able to get in and out, three points, supervisional prompting, 2.5 points. Like again, you only need 12 points to get enhanced. I'm not totting all this up because I'm really crap at maths. Um, I mean, really crap, but we already know he's way, way over enhanced, yeah? Right, dressing and undressing. So we've got prompting, which I think we all knew that was gonna be in here. Um, and assist me due to the vision, because we already know that he struggles with the eyesight on the distances because of getting into the bath, so we know that already. The possible autism, we're gonna ignore that, because Pip would. A cell phone via hanging using his belt. Blimey, you, Sarah, if you're watching this, you've tried many, many different ways to take your own life. We want you with us, not gone. I've been known to go weeks without getting dressed, changing clothes due to severe loads in it. I know this isn't about the submission pack and that's why you're watching this, but I just wanna say, I just wanna show you something. Right, on one of these calendars, I have one I have to inject because I forget. On one of these calendars, when I was so sick that I couldn't get dressed, I just, I was bedridden for months. Um, and I just physically didn't have the energy to get dressed. And it was affecting me. I was too sick to worry about it. You know, when you're so sick, you just don't worry about anything because you're in pure survival mode. I was in survival mode for a long time. But when I started to come out of it, I, I, to boost my mental health, I would give myself certain color ticks every day if I got dressed. If I managed to get dressed, if I managed to wash, just only pick two things, just two things, and I give myself ticks. And you, it makes you happy to get a tick. And you can see your progress, you can see, hang on a minute, I've gone five days, every day I've managed to get dressed. You Then you don't wanna break it, because you've gone five days. You don't want to lose it because you want to get as many days as possible. So if you're watching this, please, you've got to give yourself a reward. You have to give yourself a pat on the back if you're managing to get dressed. Because getting dressed is a challenge. Give yourself a reward. And then what I did is once getting dressed every day, and now if I have a day where I don't get dressed, I don't give myself the ticks because I've got past that. So then I use that system. I'm currently focusing on building my fitness. Hang on, so let me show you this. So I have my Harry Potter calendar. And on this, every day, these are my, that's my steps. Every day I track my steps. Look. I did 5,000, oh, 5,000 that day, 552. It's not, that's terrible. I'm gonna do a separate vlog about how to build your fitness when you're chronically ill, right? That's, oh, sorry boss, that's my focus now. 
This system works and it's like CBT, it works. Sir, you have to give yourself a pat on the back for what you achieve. I bet you never give yourself credit when you achieve something. And that isn't just to the gentleman whose submission pack this is, that's to all of you watching. When do, as humans, we're shit. We're shit at giving ourselves a pat on the back when we do good. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Give yourself a visual on your calendar, a visual, I did it that day. Because we are battling chronic illness. We're trying to live our lives. We're trying to not be a burden. We've got to be more positive with ourselves. Sir, I'd like you to, I won't, I'd like a photo of you giving yourself recognition. Email me. I'll chase you. <laughs> you don't have to. This bit, now, oh, I wasn't sharing the screen, right. I'm being really picky. I'm being really, really picky about this because obviously this is a tutorial. This is, you know, I'm trying to share knowledge. But again, this submission pack is stunning. Stunning. I am 100% confident he will win his pit. It is stunning. I am gen I am worried for him that going, going to a tribunal is too much for him. And I honestly think that the judge will read that and go, well, they, they better go, actually, we're not bringing this individual in. This is too much. Clearly, you're entitled to it. I'm like James Bond. James, uh, James Bond baddie. You know, just stroking my cat. It wasn't relevant, was it? I blame it on brain fog. What were we doing? Right. All he's got in here is prompt him. My carer will assist, prompt me to dress undress and assist me in doing so. Now look at the points. Prompt in. Two points. Needs assistance. Dress her and dress lower body. They haven't specified, is it upper body or lower body? Right? And again, we know that this gentleman is already, before we've got to this, he is already on enhanced PIP. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and again, we know that PIP won't give the, ma the actual accurate points. Okay? So he's got two points and either another two or four, okay? So they'll probably just average that out, but be specific. So based on what we know of this gentleman, what do you think, where do you think the carer has to assist him? Is it upper body or lower body? I think it's lower body because of his vision, yeah? because of his vision, because of stepping into the bar. So I think you, his vision with his legs being the furthest point away, I think with arms, it's here so he could put it on. I think it's lower body. So if we'd have put that in, the lower body is two points. So he would have got four points. And again, we know he's already got it, right? Now, hang on a minute. Now, did you spot it? What did we do? We skipped, they skipped this one. So we went from washing and bathing and then I scrolled down and I was like, oh, we're not on toilet. We went straight to washing and dressing. So it could be that they gave him the right points for it. So yeah, we've gone from washing and dressing to straight to, hang on a minute. We've gone from washing and bathing to dressing and undressing with skip toilet. Um, let's check what the next one is. Communicating. Dressing, undressing, communicate. We're back on track. My gut feel is, do you remember what they wrote about the supervision when bathing? I think that either he got the right points, and I don't know the answer, and I'm not asking the question. He either got the right points, or he it just messed with his head too much to document about toileting. Um, and that's fine. I understand. I support that. He has absolutely enough points in all the other areas to not need to discuss that if he does not want to. Right. Communication. We already know, like, I don't think if you've watched this all the way through, we know he has, doesn't find communication easy. So again, we're going to ignore that due to anxiety. Yes. My carer speaks on my behalf. Yep causes me to have an anxiety attack, nausea, sweating, struggling to speak, stuttering, getting words mixed up, dis 
regulated, resulting in meltdowns. Look, I cannot maintain eye contact. So that's definitely why they're linking in the possible autism, because that's a clear sign, isn't it? To avoid interaction with others. So if you're watching this, there is a community right here that supports you. You, I, I am your battle buddy. If you need me to help you, just message me. If you don't know what a battle buddy is, please watch that. It's really important. You need them. We need them. Become very paranoid and overwhelmed. Yep. And always see others as a threat to myself. I've been known to lock myself away and not communicate for days, weeks on end. Okay, so let's check the points. Now, honestly, I, this is the first time that I've met someone that scores on this. Um, so it's quite interesting for me to try and figure it out. Needs communication support. So for him, it's not complex. It's communication support. Blunt, yeah? And understand. Ba See, actually, this isn't... See, the way I read this, in my head, I feel like it's someone that's had a stroke. When they've had a stroke and it's severe enough that they need someone to go through it and they cannot speak um obviously there's loads of examples of what this is for but with him like how would we score it needs communication support complex not just complex it is everything and it's not that he's doesn't understand it but it say for example he's in a crowd there's no way he's going to be focusing on basic verbal information because he's going to be like what he says here, he's going to be so paranoid, he's going to be overwhelmed, his anxiety, he's going to be having all of the symptoms of nausea and everything else, that he's not going to be taking in the basic information. So I think he's got to be an eight, because he can express, but not in certain situations or during a meltdown. So I think he's... I. I think he should be an eight. Do, honestly, it doesn't actually matter because again, we know he's got well over the points and Pip don't give you the right points anyway. So we're not gonna find out how they score this correctly because they probably won't. So let's move on. Most of you watching this, you will score zero, especially if you use any of my templates or you're watching these guides. Um, if, but look, if you can talk, and answer a question, you get no points in this. Pippa brutal about it. And I mean any question. It doesn't matter if you have a panic attack on the phone or in front of them. If you've answered a question, you're no points. So whoever you are watching this, do not rely on getting points in this section. Even if you have a child that is extremely autistic, if they answer basic questions, they're not going to get any points. It's brutal. This is the first time I've I've known someone that I actually think he will he deserves or not deserves because I think there are times where people do should get points but Pip won't. Um, I think he will score. Reading. Oh, do you know what? Th th they're right. This is an aid, and I've never thought about that. This this is what I love about our community is. We get to learn from each other. Yeah, due to his Bolaria vision. Yeah. Severe migraines. Right eye. I have a question. So, if you're watching this, now, I, this is just me, Charlie, asking a question, not Pip, right? Your right eye is the one that is blurred, right? That's blurred and it causes you migraines. So, why don't you wear an eye patch? Just use your left eye. If your left eye isn't blurred, Prevent your migraines and wear an eye patch. I'm trying to think it through. Right eye, blurred, causes migraines. Just stick an eye patch on. Use your left eye. Get a cool eye patch. If, you, if you're thinking, I don't want to wear an eye patch, Charlie. Here's your choice. Migraines three or four times a week. Migraines. Come on, anyone that's had a migraine would do anything to not have them. Or prevent the migraines by wearing an eye patch. I'd wear an eye patch. You don't have to wear it when you go out if you're embarrassed about it, but if it's gonna help you because your vision isn't blurry, because that must be awful, just give your right eye a rest. Stick an eye patch on. Don't wear it all the time. 
you know, but give yourself a break. I have to say that sometimes when I come up with suggestions like this, it makes people very angry. Like there was one lady who dreaded going to bed, cried every single day, couldn't get up the stairs. Every single day, she'd dread it all day. And then she would have to sit t at least twice on the stairs to get upstairs. So I was like, move the bed downstairs. Why would you put yourself through that? You know, her mental health was severely impacted by this. And I think we're British people, we're very stuck in our ways. Before I had a bungalow, I lived in a property with stairs, bedrooms upstairs. I couldn't, I'd finally get up the stairs and then I'd be like, oh, I forgot my drink. I couldn't get back down. No. So I moved the bed downstairs, changed my life. It's much better. We have to adapt. But when I suggested that to her, you'd have thought, I mean, as far as she was concerned, I was the biggest bitch on the planet. And I'm not exaggerating. She was absolutely disgusted with me at how dare I, how dare I suggest that she moves the bed downstairs. I didn't expect that level of anger. And I don't see it as giving up, I see it as adapting. Not giving up, you're adapting, you're improving your quality of life. That's what we have to do. So, Sarah, if you are watching this and you're feeling very angry at me for suggesting an eye patch, I'm, I'm sorry, but I do think we should work as a team and try and come up with ideas to how can we improve our quality of life. Let's check the points. Needs to use an aid, two points. I think they're just gonna give him two points worsens as the day goes on. That's really important. For lots of us, we decline. I, my word in, my terminology is decline as the day goes on. Worsens as the day goes on. Make sure you get that in your claims. Reads and relays any instructions for me. Let's have a look. I don't think he's gonna get more than two points for this. Maybe for prom, mm. Actually, hang on a minute, they, they, like, they don't have, they haven't got it in here, have they? I'm not, am I missing it? Like they haven't got it in here of someone reads it to me, relays the information because that should be in there. Yeah, this doesn't meet the requirements. And there are so many people that like, you know, when you get the 44 page document, there are so many people that if I didn't go through it with them or so many people that don't apply because it's too much, they need someone to go through and relay it for them. So I think this is missing something here. So I think they've just given two points, but again, we know he's way, way over the points. Brilliant putting that in there. Really helpful for the um, judge, disability specialist and the um, doctor. Mixing with other people. Before reading this, we know it's gonna be bad. Oh, sir, extremely anxious and paranoid when mixing with people. Oh, dysregulated. I had to Google that word. Yeah, I had to Google it. When I talk to you, I, you I do have to Google a lot of what people say to me. Often leads to meltdowns, which pose a threat to myself and others around me. Right, this bit here. Now, if when you get anxious, it result, it can result in anger, which I've discovered since doing this PIP. I, I thought if people said they suffered from anxiety, I thought it meant like, heart starts beating faster, breathing changes, like want to get away, like fight or flight. And I only really considered flight. Um, but what I've learned through working with people on PIP is actually the majority of people that get anxious, it very quickly, if forced into the situation or if they cannot get away, anger is just below the surface. So if you are, you, experience if you're in a situation that you do not want to be in and you can't get away quick enough that it results in anger and that then becomes shouting aggression and you have thrown things that seems to be a common thing as well that things will get thrown you need to put that in there you need to give the example of the awful experience that you've had so you know and pip can understand what distress it can cause you and others if it if your behavior is at risk of negatively impacting others it's different in the scoring system so 
I know that, and I also think if you've experienced that, it makes you even more anxious because you obviously don't want to do it. So it makes you even, you, your anxiety kicks in quicker because you don't want to start shouting and throwing things. Um, so you avoid it even more. Let's go back to what they wrote. Aggressive outbursts which pose a threat to myself and others around me. There needs to be the example of what has happened. Um, I've had someone that threw a broom, um, someone threw a, a laptop, a tablet, often become very detached. He's, I think, I think we can agree he's gonna be diagnosed with autism. I know I'm not a doctor, but there's, it's really interesting the way they've put it in there. Scared and vulnerable if I have to mix with others. Understandable. If I didn't have the care with me, I wouldn't ever mix with others. Yep, understandable. I'm embarrassed that I can't easily mix with other people. Mixing with people is scary, especially if you have chronic illness. And so, like, with your vision challenges, I'm not surprised you're um, struggling to mix with other people because if you've got some people are blurry, then you've got your headache kicking in. Like, that plus all the noise, and if they're strangers, yeah, I get it. You don't need to be embarrassed about that. I think any one of us that was in your situation just with the blurry vision and the headaches and the sim the conditions you have we wouldn't want to mix with people so don't be embarrassed about it it's you're battling so many conditions let's go to the points i'm gonna go eight eight no question especially with what we read earlier about suicide attempts and we know, even though it says here, aggressive outbursts, we know from what we've read earlier, like actually, oh God, this is an important bit. I was about to say, we know from what we read, we, we know from what we read earlier that his anger can be severe, right? And I think we read that it can go from like, really high happy to really low like like this right but i uh, my opinion my belief could be wrong my belief is pip don't so if you explain something in bathe washing and bathing and you think when it comes to mixing with people oh i explained that in washing and bathing so they already know about that so i won't say it again here don't do that because they will only score what you've written for that one bit. They won't go back and go, oh yeah, they mentioned that there, so that will be two points in um, mixing with other people because I know they mentioned that in Washington Bathing. They don't do that. You have to explain it in each category, okay? So my point here is it would have been good to have um, pose a threat to myself and others around me just a bit of detail in what could happen. Like, for example, throwing things. Actually, I think I've said that. Substantial risk of harm to the claimant or other person. I think we can also uh, presume that this gentleman, if he's forced, forced, like, and kind of get away with it, he could get himself into such a whirlwind of distress that that could result in another suicide attempt. So like, this is an eight. I think Pip might try and give him a four or a six maybe. Uh, personally, he's an eight. I think we can agree on that. But we know that Pip don't give the right points, yeah? We already know this budgeting. We know without reading it. All right, yeah, cannot make budgeting decisions. Okay, how it does it. When it comes to budgeting, um, I do think this individual will score points. Um, most people, if you can answer a question, they will not give you points for budgets. They won't give you points for um, budgets because I think the way that Pip do it, or this is my thoughts on it, I've got a really itchy nose today. I don't know why. I think that's supposed to mean something, isn't it? I'm starting to run out of energy. When it comes to budgets, if you can answer a question, you don't get the points for budgets, that's it. They're just brutal about it. Um, so always plan that if you can communicate if so if they say what's your name how are you can you tell me who's with you today if you've got someone with you if you answer those questions you're not going to get points for budget it's that simple whether we agree with it or not that's how pip works 
This one, um, oh, and by the way, I think this, that's what I was gonna say, sorry. All of us, I haven't met anyone yet, including myself, that hasn't got into some sort of debt due to the chronic illness. Some people might disagree with that, but I truly believe it's the chronic illness. Like sometimes our only joy is the food we eat. I ate a lot of Belgian chocolate cheesecake when I first got sick. I gained stone and a half in about three months. And we chop for just that, like a couple of minutes of buying something. And then when it turns up, ooh, and it's bad and it's wrong. Um, so we have to find happiness in other areas. But I think all of us have done that. I think my point is, if you're in debt due to chronic illness, you are not alone. It's another area that sucks. Being chronically ill costs money, like in our takeaways, let alone the getting in debt because of brain fog. Like I've, all, I've had things turn up that I've ordered. I have no recollection of ordering it. Like this, this thing, I don't need this. And then I didn't have the energy to return it. It's a cable. I don't know about cables. I don't know what the hell it is, but it just happens, doesn't it? Let's check his points, budgeting decisions. I think we're gonna go six. Pip won't. Pip Pip will go two. Just the way it is. But again, we know that this gentleman is massively scores extremely high. That is the end of daily living. So now we're on to the mobility section. So for daily living, God he scored a lot of points, didn't he? So for mobility, again, we need 12 points to get enhanced. And this in the mobility section, this is where you can, if you get over 12 points, you can get the, the car. Um, personally, I can't afford that. I need the money for food. Um, so I spent 750 pounds on a car and then I, I have the money because I need it. Um, but I think a lot of people do get the car because it makes such a difference. Obviously you can do whatever you want. Planning and following your journeys. Brilliant. Now, that is shouting. If, right, a lot of people don't understand. If you use block capitals like that, you are shouting. I'm gonna read it to you. This is how people that have worked with a lot of senior roles will, will understand. So this, the way this is written is, I never go out alone, okay? I never go out alone. That's how that's written, right? If it wasn't in block capitals, it would read, I never go out alone. There's a big difference. So don't use block capitals throughout your document because the judge, you don't shout at a judge, right? And you'll, I think you'll probably see in my description below, I probably use block capitals in some words and I do in some emails when I want to be really blunt and draw attention to stuff. In this tribunal submission, I would use it exactly as they have here. They've done brilliant, because I've skipped that. I haven't even looked at that. I've gone straight to this. I never go out alone, understood. There is no gray area. Anxiety attacks. So hang on, let's start at the beginning, right? I cannot sim simply plan a follower journey. My carer will plan a journey for me. Right, never go out alone, yep. Outburst of risk, yeah. So that's, that is the same wording as what they used earlier, which is fantastic, it's really good wording. I've also nearly been hit by a vehicle, because, yeah. And now I was waiting for this bit about the blurry vision, because he's it must be scary going out. A point, just overwhelmed, yeah. I would never leave the house and we'd miss every appointment. Like, yeah. Right, he's a 12, isn't he? He's 12, yeah. A clear 12. Gonna go into a bit more, ooh, wet cat, wet cat. Moving on. Right, I'm gonna go into a bit more detail in this because um, I recently helped someone with a appeal, a mand mandatory reconsideration. And the only bit they wanted to appeal was the planning and following of a journey. So this is how Pip word it. Well, this is how I word it to you. Um, wherever you are in the country, today it's 10 o'clock in the morning, I want you to leave your home at three o'clock in the afternoon 
I want you to use public transport and you have to travel to Wick in Scotland. It's right at the top of Scotland. You have to go there today at three o'clock. So in seven hours, I want you to go plan your journey and use public transport to get to Wick, the top of near the top of Scotland. How do you feel about that? How would you feel if that's what you had to do today? Yeah, most of you are like, no, Charlie, nope, nope. Okay, so how would you feel if you had to do the same thing in seven hours, you've got set off, you're going to Wick, um, and you're gonna go in a car? Would you be able to do that if you had someone with you? Would you be able to plan the journey? Um, I, it's, these questions are out of date, aren't they? Because we don't plan the journeys anymore. We stick it in Google Maps, don't we? We stick it in a sat-nav. That's the question. So if your answer is, Charlie, no, no way, fuck, no. Like, I would never use public transport. Like, no way with my fatigue, no. Nope. And I'm, you, you know, most of us are in the vulnerable category for COVID, no. Again, chronic illness is expensive. You know, I get ta if if my car isn't working, I get taxi, or just I won't go out. To be honest, then what Pip will say. So if you go no, no, then what Pip will say, and I've heard this in every assessment I've done with people. So for example, you had a hospital appointment for a scan at a hospital that you've not been to before, and it's like forty-five minutes away from home. How would you get there? Let's go to the answers. Uh, sorry, the answers, the points. is like the answers, isn't it? Because this is what we need to see what we fit into. So let's go with that. We've got a hospital appointment, which we're going to try and get to. Uh, it's about 45 minutes away, somewhere we've never been, right? So for me, 45 minutes away, I could plan it because I'd stick it in Google Maps. So I, we don't get that. I'd have someone with me. I'd definitely have someone with me because of... Um, the walking distances. If it's 45 minutes away, I wouldn't, I would not drive myself because 45 minutes, because then obviously I've got to get home. So no, and I'd be worried about the walking distances. So whatever walking there is at the hospital and they never keep us in the near to the entrance, do they? I don't end up kicking off or anything like that. So I don't fit in that category. I'd, I'd have to have someone with me. Um, Ollie's not qualified yet, so we don't get these points. So I, I, I would have someone else with me. So you need to figure out which one you go into, yeah? But this gentleman is, is a 12. Okay, the final bit, moving around. My current off doesn't guide me, poor blur vision. We're getting run over and not coping with mixing other people, yeah. Right, okay, now, shit. This is why I'm saying shit. So he's 12 points there. You need 12 points, right? He must be a 12 points there. But we know they'll try and undercut it. But moving around, it's about the mobility. It's about how far you can walk, right? And look at his answer. There's nothing in there about the distance. Nothing at all about the distance. He's not gonna get points. This is no points. Because he's not covered these these bits. He's he is aided, but if he's aided, he's always got the blurry vision, but he can keep going. Forget about the mixing with other people. That's not what this question is. This is purely mobility. He doesn't get any points because this is the mobility section. It's only based on two questions. He needs that 12 points there to get enhanced pit, which we know he is absolutely 12 points. And then he's zero in this section. And you know what? These two have been so good at doing this bit. They would have checked the points. And I think they know that. Um, even though they disagree with it, no, he's no points because he can keep going so long as he's aided. No points on that. I don't know why I'm shocked because we're at the finals, we're at the last question, but 
I they better give him the they better give him the right points on this one. I'm sure they will. Like we, they can't possibly debate this. I'm sure they'll try. So we believe he gets enhanced peer for mobility as well, which he sh he absolutely should. Now we're going to go on to evidence. Now, if you please, if you haven't, you need to watch. If you're going to tribunal, you need to watch the tribunal submission pack guide that I did for Wendy. Okay, because we, you need to watch both of these guides. Okay. Now, I'm going to be really blunt with you, and you need to trust me, right? You've got to trust me. Well, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want, right? It's your choice. It's your tribunal. You do whatever you want. But I promise I am right. Can you see this bit here? 111 pages. You know what I was saying earlier about block capital letters? 111 pages. 111 pages. This is too much. It's too much. It's way too much evidence. This is what everyone seems to do. Everyone does seem to be... I'm not talking about this gentleman right now. What I see on PIP chat groups is it's like a competition for who's got the most conditions. Who's got the most conditions? And I'm like, I have one. I'm not counting the psoriasis because now I've got treatment, so you can't see it. It's, it's just beneath the surface. I have psoriatic arthritis, I have one condition and I, I get PIP. It doesn't matter, I could have, someone else could have 20 conditions, but their quality of life is better than mine, their daily living is less impacted than mine. It's not about the number of conditions, it's not about the number of meds you're on, and it is not about 50 million pieces of evidence, all right? We've got to make it as easy as possible for the judge, the doctor, and the specialist. It was quite easy, once I realized how many pages it was, it was quite easy for me to go, hang on a minute, I, I can get this down. Right, evidence. Look at all this. Mental health, mental health, mental health. Mental health, mental health, mental health, mental health, mental, mental health. Right, no, nope. That you do not need this much evidence. This is the only piece of evidence regarding meds that I'm going to show you because it's got doctor's names on which we're not obviously not including you do not need to sh and there are so I don't know how many pages uh, because I just skipped it right there's so many pages of medication you do not I repeat you do not need to include constant evidence of your meds this is the evidence I used for Wendy she asked her doctor for a copy of her medical records. And this is what she got. They have a uh, current medication, right? This is all you need. Just one page. It's got what's on repeat. That's it. Just one page of evidence on meds. I'm not gonna show this on screen because it's a nightmare to take out all the addresses and everything. And if you go to Wendy's uh, the tribunal submission pack, I'll put, it, I'll put the link again there. Um, I do show examples with that, I cut all of that. So he has got a letter about evidence showing trauma therapy. Brilliant evidence. He's also got a letter that states that they discharged him from the service, but they, for psychological therapies, and they have reopened his case. Brilliant, brilliant evidence. He's got letters confirming, like, um, what is this for? A nurse-led clinic for uh, mental health, adult mental health. Brilliant evidence. But there's many of them. Um, you don't need to keep including them. Right, for those of you that, um, that think that letters from your parents, partners, friends will help don't bother it doesn't help anyone watch judge judy my mum loves judge judy so we tend to watch her while we're eating if it's someone you know that is not a professional pip are not interested do not bother submitting it is a complete waste of time um if your friends family loved ones care for you at all they're gonna write what you want yeah doesn't count don't include it He's got evidence for the alcohol dependency. Fantastic evidence. Really important. Do not forget, for every piece of evidence, 
you on the when you take photographs or something you have to include the date they have to see the date of the letter or whatever evidence it is the date of the letter and the your name needs to be on there you can't write it on it has to be on that piece of evidence actually that's not true because on wendy's she had a photo of her spine from the mri and i hand wrote her name details on but then we had a hospital letter that had the details of the MRI with the name of the hospital, the name of the specialist, her name, and the date on it. And then obviously that photo of her spine with a big piece of metal in there matched. But ideally you need to have that date, your name. It always comes on the letter. Any letter should have that on. So it should always come on that, yeah? But make sure you include it in the photo, otherwise it won't, it can't, it won't be counted. Right, he's also got where he's requested letters. You know where you have to pay for letters from doctors? Don't, I don't recommend you do it. Just in case you haven't watched the one, uh, the guide for Wendy. In your GP notes, they have a summary on. So you know every time you see, a, you, we quite often see different doctors. They have this summary on there. And now at the top of, at top of every page of your GP notes is the GP's details and your details, right? Obviously I've got this so that you can't see it. Um, so it has active problems. So don't bother getting the letter because the GPs like, they're not gonna word it to meet PIP requirements because they don't have any training for PIP and they're humans. So they'll use the words like sometimes, um, which we, if you the, see why most people lose PIP, just ask for your GP Oh, just ask them for a copy of your medical re records. Now it's going to have everything in there. Do not leave these lying around because there's so much personal information in there. So it has active problems. This is the evidence of it. So for that gentleman, it will have a list of his mental health, a list of the vision. It will have everything in there. Um, significant past. It will have his details in there about the trauma that he's seen. That will be in there. So he's got a letter about his referral for autism. So we know that he linked it in, he and his carer put that in there and he's got the evidence that he is being referred. Brilliant. He's got the evidence for his eyes. This is like, honestly, this is brilliant. I'm gonna stop looking at his evidence, okay? Because you know, what I want you to do, hang on, let's go, let me go back. All you need to do is, for your conditions, is show that it's true. That's it, okay? That's it really. That's it that you require in the evidence. You don't have to be so extreme in what you submit because there's a lot of misinformation out here on social media um, and lot, so much of it is just BS. You don't need to include 50 million pages of when you got your meds, you just don't. The, challenge of PIP is you have to be able to communicate the impact to your daily living and your mobility. That's what you have to do. You don't have to prove constantly that you take, like, I don't have to prove constantly that I take tramadol. I don't. It's in my GP notes. That's it. I didn't even include evidence. Um, it's only been since Wendy's tribunal that I've even got involved in evidence. Every other PIP claim I've won I haven't submitted evidence. I haven't, because Pip can check it. We give Pip permission to contact our doctors. So contact our doctors, check that we've got the records there, which they do, they absolutely check. So I do think it's easier to put it in, especially tribunal submissions, you need to put the get the evidence to put it in so they've got everything in one document, yeah? For your submission, put everything in one document. Now, if you want the template that this, in, this gentleman's used, that I use for Wendy, it is available. I don't know how to put attachments in the description in YouTube yet. So if you want it, just email me and I will send it you across. I actually send like Wendy's, uh, just the example, pack out. I'm not gonna send this gentleman's. Um, I will send you Wendy's, okay? Um, and just to clarify, this gentleman gave me permission in writing that I could use his uh, pack so that it would help other people. Um, so a massive thank you to him again. Um, and isn't it, wasn't it? I was right, wasn't I? It was stunning. I hope this has helped. 
definitely have a look at my channel um, for other guides that will help you during this horrendous pit experience. Um, and if you've got any questions, just put them below. Okay, take care of yourself.